always grateful for feedback. Gamification is awesome until it's no longer. And when that happens is when the new right or alt right um, advances the war on uh, the fundamental laws of our society by the means of gamification. Our next speaker has is going to take a closer look at um, how they're doing that, doing that um, and give a warm round of applause to Anne Vogelsang. Hi. Thank you so many people. I'm a bit anxious and uh, also grateful to be able to speak here. It's not the greatest content for this time of day, so yeah, content warning. By the nature of this talk, it's uh, about right-wing propaganda, racism, uh, sexism, violence against women. I'm going to be talking about it, but I will also show images and videos. I blurred some of the content, but I didn't throw out all of it because I think it's important to understand how these cultural spheres that I will be talking about um, interact. But I know it's a difficult thing, reproduction of stuff, reproduction of stuff. Um, I'm lucky to be white male and no victim of uh, hate on the internet until now anyway. So if any of you are, are wrong-footed by this, uh, don't feel scared to leave, I, I do understand. But um, otherwise, please stay, it, it's going to be, uh, going to be uh, interesting. Also, sorry to the translations, I tend to speak a bit fast. I can imagine it's going to be uh, difficult to translate, but thanks for doing it anyway. Well, you are welcome. So, um, let's get going. I made a plan of what we might look at. I looked at and thought it might be too much for the time we are allotted, so um, I threw out some of it, but um, <laughs> I want to speak about half of the things I uh, threw out anyway. There are some things I don't need to explain because this is a very special crowd. I don't have to tell you that gaming is the largest and soon the most influential culture industry in the world. Um, they overtook the movies industry in 2014 and um, most of their revenue these days comes from mobile games. Clash of Clans uh, had 6.4 billion dollars in revenue. I never played it myself, but it's supposed to be a great game. It's the most successful app on the Apple Store. Millions of people worldwide sp uh, play Minecraft. I'm not one of them either. This talk isn't really about games, though, or not even political games. We remember this or <laughs> concentration camp manager Millennium, um, not the their predecessors from Nazi Germany or the war games uh, that were spread in England. We won't either be speaking about the equivalents from the US market or fan games for real wars, such as Quest for Saddam or the mod that the is so-called Islamic State published. We won't be talking about School Shooter North American Tour 2012, where people who fancy uh, school shootings can, uh, can uh, play through that. We won't be speaking about AAA war simulators, the uh, normal games we uh, play and love, such as modern warfare, that um, terrorists like to use to train. We won't be speaking about um, the uh, <laughs> won't be speaking about uh, real world soldiers either. Although the American army has uh, 
computer games that they actually used for recruiting, we won't either be talking about the discourse that some parties are engaging in in Germany if, uh, and have been engaging in for the past years. Gamification, euphemistically speaking, um, is the idea that we are all game designers of our own lives. Um, less euphemistically, you might say, it's a it's a uh, technique of ludo capitalism. So gamification is is uh, an interesting measure of customer loyalty, customer loyalty building, and it's popular on this new level of the economy where experiences are being sold rather than actual goods and can sell to not just customers but also to employees such that, for example, employees regard their own exploitation as fun. I don't think that society, um, a society that has these games has to be surprised if there are, if there are belief wars about beliefs. Some examples that some of you might remember progress bars or where you can uh, watch a progress for <laughs> that allow you to watch a progress bar for hours and uh, that such things such as Weight Watchers that help in uh, motivating yourselves we can use it for we can use it for political decisions or social decisions by uh, finding the people who fit us with a simple swipe swipe and there's this kind of radar function where the uh, your future romantic partner is a um, bubble in your vicinity and this only works because all of us know uh, no po Pokemon Go by now, so we can gamify uh, movement in the public sphere. Public sphere. And uh, this, of course, gives these companies a massive uh, basis of data. And this, of course, allows for op opportunities in cooperation. There's a, for example, companies can buy uh, Pokemon hotspots in their vicin vicinity. That's pervasive gaming. But this can also be hacked, so, uh, such as the Nazis of the Daily Stormer did in the United States because uh, it allows them to recruit those who like to play games and those who like to uh, take care of their own body and to prove that I'm not making this up, this is the Pokemon Nazi challenge on Daily Stormer. Speaking of challenge, since 2012, Zombies Run motivates joggers to run faster by uh, pretending that they're being chased by zombies because that it's proven that this uh, makes people run uh, longer distances. It works very well. Um, and those who don't want to run simply uh, call uh, an Uber and watch their <laughs> employers watch uh, their drivers gamifying their employees who in a way are um, breaking the first law of robotics. There are gamification services and uh, tool sets for schools, for example, allowing them to gamify uh, teaching. There are gamified assessment centers where people may not get a job, but a great candidate experience. You can find uh, serious results in scientific protein folding and most of you probably know Capture the Flag as a format at crypto tournaments. 
that uh, may allow you to reach an exploit a bit more quickly. I don't want to talk about these principles in depth, but the thing that is important in these li lists but doesn't always show up is that games are supposed to be voluntary, so people bring something that uh, is called intrinsic motivation. And what happens if you use these techniques of uh, voluntary engagement to stimulate political engagement and what might the consequences of that be in a society that tends to uh, create larger and ever larger gamified worlds whether that's Disneyland or Facebook starting from a certain size these become political because uh, people need rules but this happens along certain lines but these lines are given by society that control the so uh, by the uh, corporations that, that uh, have designed these uh, societies and who are mainly motivated by profit if you want to be good at games you have to follow the rules or break them successfully or you have to um, uh, get people to play the game successfully and I will be showing you some examples of this. So most of you probably know the story but I'll tell it anyway if I succeed in that. And it's going to be a very sh uh, shortened version of the story. So 2012, the feministic uh, girl uh, women theory started on Kickstarter. Uh, she wanted to get $6,000. She got 60,000. And there was a lot of interest. But she also got a lot of threats. And there were games where, peop where you could beat her up. And 2004, the text adventure The Person Quest um, came out. And the maker also was threatened. And afterwards, her ex boyfriend um, was angry at her online and told everyone that she cheated on him. And so, from a small struggle within the game industry quickly there became uh, there came a, f a culture fight a full-grown culture fight and that's seemingly between feminists and the feminists and um, some game industry industrials tried to destroy games and some right-wing people are the heroes who try to save our games from them and here in this example one side was doxed so a lot of documents personal documents of them came out uh, were leaked and they had to move and the discussion well it really escalated in, in english you call a, a place where war is fought a theater for war and here we can see that for someone, uh, some people, it this theater of war can actually be a game or yeah. So uh, the theory that it was back then is hard to hold because actually it's still happening. And on Twitter, a lot of this is happening. This is one of the main stages, and there were more than two million tweets with game hashtag #gamertate. Uh, Gamergate in two months and a lot of right-wing people soon realized that they could really use this for example Breitbart who really pushed this topic <laughs> and he really attacked Milo Yanopoulos Yanopoulos and he tweeted a lot about this and um, he soon started uh, the progress of separating those who are uh, ready to re receive those right ideas and that what we call metapolitics in Europe got really started there and that was a, an important milestone for the self-organization of the right wing in the internet 
One big point is fortune there, and so-called raids soon got a part of their culture. And they were mostly a testing field for a gamification of th uh, this stru these structures. Uh, sometime those raids turned into real life uh, phenomenon. And that was against copyright lobbyists, Operation Payback 2010. It was against the Scientology before that. And then there was Occupy Wall Street. And at the latest point, that is when they uh, separated into several streams. And then in the US, an important soft drink producer asked his custom uh, asked the customer what they should call their new drink, and the poll was won by Hitler did nothing wrong, which um, meant that they had to stop this campaign altogether. And that means that they have a far re uh, greater reach than uh, the, the right wing has just a far greater reach than only the target audience. Then there was this goal to red pill fortune. So they wanted to enlighten all the public how the whites are actually the suppressed minority or majority, however you want to look at it. And so they did this on a politically incorrect port on 4chan. And according, uh, people were posting and according to some pseudo-random number of their post was decided what board wa would be red-pilled. And according to what board they would red-pill, they were already adjusting the, uh, the, the content. And they were quite successful with this coordinated propaganda action. The next big raid was 2013, Operation Lollipop, where they started on Fortune and started a lot of fake accounts on Twitter. And they called this social justice warriors. So very extreme examples of black feminists or civil rights activists. And they just turned it into the extreme to provoke adverse reactions. 2014, one year later, this escalated even further. And even on 4chan, preparations for Gamergate and such actions were banned. And the people who were so happily there, they had needed a new place. And that was the start of Internet Chan or HN. The most attacks from 2014 started actually from Wizard Chan, which was a small shootout from uh, 4chan. Today, we call this incels or four cells, but they call themselves with cells. And the self image was that they were just wizards and intelligent and they couldn't deal with women because they were too clever. And they just confirmed themselves and compensated for insecurities. So, but many people there actually suffered from real issues. So actually, the, the fight was not just against a woman who destroyed a game or something, but also against women who wanted to tell us something about depression and or to tell the affected people something about uh, depression. And then th this man is an impo interesting player about this. He actually then left HN and was sorry about what he did. And I'm not showing this because it's about him, but I'm showing it because it's an interesting picture and a lot of things come together here. So a lot of types of men come together here. One important part is also the pickup scene that actually play the big game of picking up women. And Angela Rushka had a talk about her, her game, the game, the game. It's an interesting talk, I can recommend it. 
but this is actually a bit different because there's a darker side. So there is no isolated life. We all live together. And so if one person says that the, this life is just a game, then the other people have no no say in it. And all these topics were well researched within the pickup scene and they used all this knowledge extensively and they were using gamer, sad young men in the cellar or in the basement and all these people came together and became active and one thing that they had in common is actually anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is always an option and I have this Kraken Oh yeah, I've seen this Kraken from um, Digital Courage, the data crake or data octopus that actually uh, I don't like it. Maybe you can get rid of it. Then there's the memes. There's Hitler memes, anti-Semitism memes, white supremacy jokes, paper the paper the frog, and a lot of evolutions of these. And actually, it's a complete universe of different pathetic ma uh, uh, different versions of men and there are some figures for the in-group and then others for those that don't belong in those are called NPCs that's the people who have no agency they that's people that follow uh, foreign scripts that have no choice that's the the good supposedly good people and so the enemies got uh, got their image and they became the enemy and ever further stigmatized um, well people radicalized themselves in fighting against those images and the heroes became holy men and the mass murder was in the first place some um, entertainment program on HN and uh, when you look at the comments and the shit posts to the press, the inside jokes from the side culture, it was just entertainment. And part of that was also that his own deed was a live stream. And it was exemplary for s many things that the right scene learned from others. They use um, live streams, for example, but this was a first that in that everything was streamed in his first person perspective. So, in the same way where you can watch and follow other people when they play a shooter, and like a let's player says, How? If this is how I am playing, how are you playing, could you do it as well as I can? And this is the message that he tries to also send when he is showing how he is doing it. And this is just part of the game. But he was actually just a copycat from Andre Revik. And in the Encyclopedia Dramatica, he still has the highest score for a first-person shooter. And the repeatability of this, what those two mass murderers did, is um, an important point about the game. If it's not repeatable, it's not a game, but it's also very political. So we have a long following of want to be stand-up comedians or um, alone entertainment artists and then there was a lot of following if the first threat when the first threat of fans and followings of the Christchurch murderer was full they had to open up to 15 follow-up threads but then it just closed down then there are games where you can play Hitler or Mussolini or the murderer from Christchurch and the goal is to shoot feminists or civil rights activists or then in different cities where Jews or Mexicans or different ethnicities were shot. So the main thing is to shoot someone. 
And the, uh, the shooter from Halle, he took over some of these um, these points and it was supposed to be funny for the in-group and he also streamed everything on Twitch, which is a, play, a platform for Let's Plays mostly and he added another play uh, formula that's crafting, so he created his own weapons as well. And in his document he says, hey, the whole deal is to show the viability of improvised guns. Um, of course there are, of course people die, but they're part of it anyway. I want to show the people that we can be successful in this game even in countries where weapons aren't so easy to acquire. The terrorists of Christchurch and El Paso posted their announcements on 8chan that was, uh, that was uh, taken down at the end. The attacker from Oslo posted it on uh, another Chan and then uh, the attacker from Halle posted it on Kraut Chan who then posted, uh, immediately pulled the plug and then it was posted on uh, a small anime board that couldn't deal with it and uh, the ensuing shitstorm. But of course the people were still there, the operators were still there, but there was no longer a safe server. And this meant that 1.7 uh, million users had become immediately homeless. And this now exists, it's called 8kun. It's operated by the same person as 8chan before, as Jim Watkins, this gentleman here. He was at a hearing in front of the US Congress with this uh, QAnon pin and was, fire, was uh, celebrated for it. And he, this has nothing to do with game gamification anymore, but maybe not all of you no look in it, which he also helped. It's uh, an onion routing protocol that also uses blockchain as a network. And it doesn't only want to improve the Tor protocol, but also uh, create an economics incentive to uh, make the whole protocol safer or more secure, and the creator was active on LokiNet, he called it LARP, so and he's deeply involved in this scene, and I think we it would be important to talk about the economic aspect of this first. <laughs> it's, it's a very new thing that this uh, privacy platform is suddenly attached to capita capitalism, but I'm going to be speaking about this at length later on. But all of this is one-sided. Um, people are saying, hey, we're playing this game, you didn't know about it, but uh, now you're dead. What if the other side, if the opposing team um, actually gets in involved and accepts this? There's a good example of this. It's a campaign of the Chan Zine, which started about two years ago, and that uh, touched questions of uh, political par participation and uh, representation, and that is, he will not divide us. On the 20th of January 2017, the day where Donald Trump was inaugurated as a president, um, this uh, exhibition at the Museum of Moving Images in New York was um, unveiled. They um, had this uh, exterior wall that was live streamed or the camera on the exterior wall of the museum and um, passers-by were invited to speak into the camera and say he will not divide us, which would then be live streamed on the internet. This installation was supposed to be um, there for four years, the entire term of office of President Trump. Shia LeBeouf, uh, one of the people who started this, is a pretty well-known uh, actor. 
which made him a good target for poll. They had created a lot of Trump memes, so they were naturally on the other side of the political conflict, and they were planning a raid. They were planning to uh, create a game of trolling this uh, live stream of all means possible. I'm uh, showing you this video to take over the exhibit and trigger Shia. By day two, Shire is getting sick of hearing about Pepe. Pepe! He will not divide us! Pizza Gate is real! Shia LaBeouf is a rich white liberal who doesn't what care does that about the working what? class. Clearly Paul learned that Shire was particularly triggered by Nazi role-playing, so it became a game to make Nazi references while he was on camera. What's up? Bang bang. Hitler did nothing wrong. In a rage, he sexually assaulted some dude. I just want to red pill Shia on the truth about the Holocaust. I'm a lumberjack and that's okay. I drink my milk and I work all day. Down with the vegan agenda. After not even four weeks, um, the museum cancelled this installation after the trolls had escalated this. So far, the uh, LeBeouf physically assaulted a participant. They they uh, built this fence instead of the uh, installation. Although this was not good art, Shai had created one of the most fascinating things to watch on the internet. It is the single best reality TV show on the internet right now, and it is going on for the next four to eight years. The video from which I extracted this is uh, a summary of the first uh, first season because um, it uh, turned into a kind of reality thing because LeBeouf is a bit uh, fond of uh, fighting. Um, but the next episode was uh, cancelled quite quickly when somebody drew a weapon in front of the camera. Um, uh, uh, so uh, this uh, message of he will not divide us was moved to a <laughs> to a secret location on a flag, but. Uh, Chan still tracked them down and they eventually managed to uh, to hiss their own flag instead and they'd won. That's capture the flag. Two weeks later a new flag appeared on the roof of the uh, foundation for art and technology in Liverpool. Um, this is uh, the building was uh, was guarded but um, of course these gamers took a guarded building as a challenge they tried to burn the flag with a very strong laser somebody built a drone with a flamethrower attached there were psyops and emails to uh, people working for the foundation to turn them or to so in security and three people eventually managed to get on top of the roof and into the live stream and they had forgotten a pair of scissors to, pair of scissors to remove the uh, cable binders but they were chased across the roof by security and the police and so the uh, foundation cancelled this installation because they considered it too dangerous a few weeks later it appeared the flag appeared again on a white wall in some anonymous room um, this was a clear challenge 
It took them four hours to find this apartment. It was the flat of one of the involved artists. Um, so somebody on a pole ordered a few pizzas there and then they uh, didn't do a lot after that because they had clearly won. But it's still going, the flag waved in some uh, in Poland and in some hut in Scandinavia for a while, but it's mostly been waving on the uh, on top of the of le lieu unique in uh, France and uh, this flag has been uh, attacked uh, several times and it's currently it currently looks like this in the live stream and i think it's a great example for the of the gamification of uh, uh, civilization as entertainment, but also the gamification of um, this of this struggle. Um, a similar thing happened in Germany earlier. It's uh, the Dr Drachen Drachengame, but I. Uh, removed it from my list so I'm not going to be talking about it but it's not it's not very exciting you don't need to hear about it but instead I want to talk about um, this mimetic warfare warfare happened in uh, in Germany because things have been happening in uh, in Germany too not just in the US um, reconquista Germanica uh, thankfully this is in the past now as well So this is combined between somehow between the R and the G of the Romantic runes, but it also looks like a broken Bluetooth logo. It's a joke that I haven't gotten yet, but it's pretty old. They got known by strong memeing and pushing of the AFD, a German party before the last election. And then the reaction of Jan Böhmermann, a German comedian. And then someone from the German parliament f uh, attacked a German news magazine with par uh, partially uh, uh, like 7 million emails per hour, uh, uh, tweets per hour at times. And then there was this other group that also memed a lot, but they didn't get as much attention and so less repression and so they protected themselves as satire or live action role playing so they uh, when they came back from the first repression and that looked like this somewhere in the wastelands three years after the invasion this video is from the fall 2018, so three years after the invasion is about 2015, when this group was attacked vigorously, and all those steel helmets, that's for one unironic um, romanticization of the soldier get up but on the other hand it's also a satire on the Böhmermann attack I greet you. My name is Nikolai Alexander. Nikolai Alexander was the was a quite successful right wing YouTuber before his start as Communist of Germanica, but he changed to BitChute and also to Discord to avoid being deleted from YouTube. And this uh, platform. Um, is also um, mostly used by gamers and it includes features like gamifica uh, of gamification like leveling 
and uh, you can rise up through the ranks. So there are a lot of rooms, uh, roles for the meme gaming and pre-war game uh, LARPing. So now I have to explain LARPing maybe. LARPing is a role-playing, live action role-play gaming as a hobby. A lot of people do that and there is a multitude of different worlds where you can enter and just do it for fun and this format is obviously also available in the military and it's also there in historical reenactment that sometimes produces weird um, historical movies where people reenact world war scenes but th there are also these LARPers from the third way small neo-nazi role players Dead role play being in the uh, Hitler Jugend. And then there are others who pose with soft air guns, but then also sometimes really kill people. Luckily, so far, only in the US. But that's always the question if when something like this appears, is it just make believe or is it real? And it's really difficult to uh, uh, to evaluate this if everything is supposed to be satire or not real and some of them these even look like punks so after the first wave and after Böhmermann some other things were necessary so the video that I first showed also was called the great strategy change and there were at first also way too many people who re didn't really belong so now they were saying now we get a lot more exclusive and we only let people in who really belong there and I'm gonna show more the lackeys of the system always proclaim the right danger I can tell you there is no right danger not yet but because this country was so polluted with leftist ideas that in reality even the right wing is left it's a system that doesn't even doesn't not only not provide a fi fixed point but also like quicksand that actually drift lets you drift off and tries to infiltrate you the right ones that those are actually social justice warriors in reverse they are actually the same sort of people that they pretend to fight against but have a different label. And this sort of people does not belong to my species, even if they, like me, walk on two legs. And I will not spend one more second of my life with people who are not of the same species as me. I wouldn't even hold them as pets. I will cut them out of my life like the pound of flesh in the uh, merchant of Venice. I want to, I will cut them out, uh, I will suck them out like poison out of a wound. The insanity ends now. There will be no more tolerance for weaklings because this tolerance, uh, there will be no more tolerance because this tolerance is what made us weak. Tolerance destroyed our country. Tolerance is tried our culture and everything and I stop this now because it goes on for 15 minutes and it's pure fascism and everything this guy uh, says is just copied one to one from discord and being from the theater I find this really interesting but this also means that only words instead of deeds can count because that's where you only can uh, only where you can tell what people actually mean or you're fighting culturally so in the first wave there were influencers and politicians from AFD and now in the uh, second phase Martin Selma and Nikolai, Zellner, uh, Nikolai Alexander fought about steel helmets and used these videos. So one of these was for political reasons against terrorism, but he only said we are too few for that now. 
beobachtete Rekrutierung, beobachtete Reconquista Germanica und vor vier, vier Wochen verkündete der So, for, uh, four weeks ago, Reconquista Germanica, um, they dissolved themselves and they complained about being watched by the um, police uh, agencies and he was, well, he was complaining that he, he was uh, under surveillance and uh, claimed that now he will destroy his own fighting ship and that wouldn't be the b worst thing to drown yourself basically and now this is the last chapter and I say thank you for everyone at home because this is where the stream ends and this is something that's still active and I don't want to advertise that so this is where the stream ends